For centuries, humans have peered into the cosmos, wondering if we were truly alone. We've imagined civilizations light years away, sent out radio pulses into the dark, and studied strange anomalies, hoping for just one undeniable sign. And now, we may have received it. What began as a routine observation of an obscure interstellar object, three atlas, has turned into what may be the most chilling astronomical discovery in human history. It wasn't the object's origin that surprised scientists. It wasn't its trajectory, its brightness, or its strange silence. It was what came from inside it. The James Webb Space Telescope, orbiting silently a million miles from Earth, picked up something that shattered every expectation. Not a comet, not a rock, not a relic, but something that behaved like it was alive. As astronomers dug deeper, what they uncovered forced them to abandon everything they thought they knew about space, life, and our place in the universe. Because three Atlas might not just be passing through our solar system, it might be studying us, and more terrifyingly, it might be reacting to us. If you want more updates on discoveries like this, subscribe to the channel for the latest coverage and analysis. From the moment 3 Atlas was spotted near the edge of the solar system, something about it disturbed astronomers. Its brightness was unnatural, far too intense for an object its size. Normally, comets brighten because of outgassing. Frozen materials vaporize as they approach the sun, creating glowing tails of gas and dust. But Atlas was different. It glowed with a sharp, clean precision, too constant, too stable, as if the light wasn't reflected at all but generated. That caught the attention of NASA and ESA almost immediately. Telescopes from Chile to Hawaii began tracking it, but it was James Webb that was tasked with answering the deeper questions. Webb, with its unprecedented infrared sensitivity, wasn't just looking for light. It was measuring heat, mapping the object's thermal fingerprint. And what it found was shocking. Atlas wasn't just warm from solar radiation. It was emitting heat from deep within, focused at its center, radiating outward in pulsing waves. This kind of internal heat suggested something far beyond geology. The pulses were rhythmic irregular enough to seem natural, yet structured enough to imply design. It was as if the object was breathing, alive, not in the biological sense perhaps, but certainly in a mechanical or energetic one. And from that moment on, the scientific community stopped referring to three Atlas as a comet. Behind closed doors, some had begun calling it the visitor. As Webb continued its scans, other instruments joined in. Radio telescopes began picking up a strange electromagnetic haze surrounding the object. At first, it was dismissed as background noise. Static, the kind of interference every deep space observer has seen a thousand times. But something in that static was off. Teams at MIT and Harvard ran Fourier transforms, mathematical breakdowns to isolate patterns within the chaos and buried within that noise they found it, a repeating signal. Not the regular thump of a pulsar or the decaying hum of radiation. This was something else. The pulses were spaced at almost perfect intervals, but with just enough variation to mimic language, or, at the very least, intent. It was subtle, so subtle that it could have gone unnoticed, but the more they analyzed it, the clearer it became. This was not a random emission. It wasn't something Atlas was simply leaking into the void. It was broadcasting. And worse, it might have been listening. The narrow band it used matched frequencies close to our own communication and guidance systems. The signal changed slightly when solar wind increased or when observatories coordinated their efforts across the globe. It was behaving as if it were aware of its surroundings, adapting in real time. That's when whispers began to circulate. This wasn't a natural object. It was responding. Then came the flare. For weeks, the object remained relatively stable, drifting through space with its pulsing heat and silent signal. Until one day, without warning, Atlas erupted. 
In a span of less than two minutes, its brightness surged by 40%. A sudden, violent outburst unlike anything ever seen in a natural body. But it wasn't chaotic. It was perfectly symmetrical, almost surgical. At the exact same moment, Webb detected a spike in thermal energy, a heat bloom that radiated outward and then stabilized as though something inside the object had switched on. Scientists were stunned. This wasn't ice sublimating. This wasn't pressure building from trapped gases. This was a system activation. It was the difference between a campfire catching wind and someone flipping a light switch. And the timing was chilling. The flare occurred as Atlas passed a specific point in the solar system, a region near Earth's orbital plane. It was as if it crossed a threshold and reacted. Immediately after the flare, its thermal signature changed permanently. It wasn't the same object anymore. Something inside had awakened. And just days later, astronomers noticed something else. Atlas had altered its course. Objects in space don't just change direction. Comets don't steer. They obey the laws of gravity, of radiation pressure, of momentum. But Atlas was now drifting off its predicted trajectory. Not wildly, but with measured precision. At first, it was just a slight drift, a few arcseconds here and there. But over the next few days, the deviation became undeniable. It was as if the object had corrected its path, and not just randomly. Its new course brought it closer to Earth's orbital neighborhood. Not a direct collision, nothing that would trigger planetary defense protocols, but close enough to be noticed close enough to raise alarms. Analysts pored over the data. Maybe it was a gas jet they suggested, maybe a miscalculation, but nothing matched. The trajectory shift occurred hours after the flare. The timing was too exact. It was as though the flare and the course correction were linked, as if one had triggered the other. And the most unnerving possibility of all, that whatever was inside three Atlas saw us, analyzed us, and adjusted its position in response. That we weren't looking at an object anymore, but a system, a construct, something that wasn't just passing through, but performing a mission. After the trajectory shift, a new anomaly emerged. James Webb's spectrometric data revealed oscillations, but not in temperature or light. These were oscillations in electromagnetic field strength, Rhythmic fluctuations emanating from the object's core that resembled something scientists had only seen once before in biological systems. Dr. Leona Kersh, a biophysicist who had been brought in as a consultant, immediately recognized the pattern. The frequency of the fluctuations mimicked that of cellular respiration, specifically the oxygen cycle in microbial life. Of course, no one was suggesting that Atlas had lungs, but the fact remained. The object was cycling energy with the timing, regularity, and efficiency of something living, or worse, something designed to mimic life. When supercooled plasma simulations were run to test alternative explanations, none reproduced the waveform. The conclusion was as surreal as it was simple. This pattern could only emerge from an adaptive energy-regulating system. Whether artificial or organic, it was no comet. 